Today's topic is uh, wisdom of life and nature. There are three things, wisdom, life and nature. So we shall have to uh, uh, define what means wisdom, what means life, and what means nature. In accordance with the uh, <coughs> Buddhist tradition, wisdom means the understanding understanding of the reality without any distortion. What reality is, is to be understood. Understood means realizing it by one's own authentic mind. So that is called wisdom. But humanity has uh, many layers of mind knowledge, information, understanding, wisdom. Here the wisdom refers for the uh, direct touch of mind with the reality. Knowledge includes uh, understanding as well as acceptance without understanding. For example, many things are taught by teacher in the classroom or you read something from the book and you just accept them without your own examination, analyzation. So that is a knowledge or accumulation of information, but that is not understanding or wisdom. The modern education system mostly depends on accumulation of knowledge. Without understanding, people make to accept this is, this is not, something like that. Even the so-called scientific knowledge, there are also many things are acceptance. In the past, someone, some famous scientist has experimented, inquired, and um, analyzed and find something. And his or her findings are being taught later on. So we just accept them. Any principle, scientific principle, we accept them, but we ourselves did not experiment it and we ourselves did not realize these things happen like this. So this kind of uh, knowledge is a, a knowledge of borrowed, a knowledge of acceptance, not a wisdom of knowing the reality. If you have a <clears throat> realization, that means wisdom, then uh, that wisdom cannot be uh, altered or uh, changed through others' argument or rationalization or whatever it may be, because you have experimented, you have examined, and then you know this, so that is uh, unshakable. There's no any other argument can alter that wisdom. Now, the second <clears throat> thing is uh, life. Life, uh, generally, the word life generally refers to a duration of time. But here, it does not refer to duration of time, but is, it is uh, an entity which have a combination of body and mind. A body and mind come to, together and uh, working with uh, cooperatively or jointly, that is uh, called a life. Buddhist tradition understands there are two different levels of life. The subtle level of life is uh, a body which is uh, curated by the karmic force of the previous life. That means it is created by a consciousness. That consciousness takes the charge of the body. So this kind of uh, working together. For example, a human being, human life means a body which is a composite of five ele four elements, working in the fifth element, and which is owned by a consciousness, a clarity 
of knowing the consciousness, these three, this, this five are put together, working harmoniously and with a balance that is called life. And the third is the nature. Nature is uh, referring to a uh, generally the world nature is referring to something originated by its own, not an artificial, but an original thing that is called nature. That also <clears throat> at two different levels, nature is considered to be two different levels. Um, that, as I mentioned before, the nature, the name of nature in uh, Indian Sanskrit language, Bhuta, and its Tibetan language, Jhuan, it is a reference to the future, to becoming, or source of future. This kind of nature has two levels. One is a fundamental level, and the other is at the manifested or expressed level. So these two levels, the nature is working. The fundamental <coughs> nature is uh, the four <coughs> basic elements. <coughs> the fire, the wind, the um, uh, earth, and um, uh, the, the water, and these four elements. And these four elements is uh, able to exist or work in the fifth, the space or the wideness. So this five nature comes together, then it is uh, it makes a possible of a future uh, change. Mm -hmm. Then the uh, is at a manifested level or expressed level, the mountains, the, the rivers, the trees, the flowers, the uh, seas, and the um, uh, sorovers, and uh, all these uh, not man-made, but it is uh, coming into being and exist there by its own energy or by its own force. This is uh, uh, expressed nature. Basically, all the four elements are opposite to each other. The fire, if water is put on fire, the fire either extinguished or the fire will overcome the water and the water is uh, uh, dried or the wind is uh, blowing and the earth is uh, not uh, um, shakeable uh, by the wind or all these are basically by its own fundamentally uh, not very um, uh, cohesive with each other it comes together there is some struggle but through certain design and it become cooperative and become cooperative that makes all the beauties and all the whatever the uh, living things uh, are through the very balanced cooperation and uh, cohesiveness of the or the elements or the natures now the life and the nature, the basic uh, um, understanding of this life and nature, entire tradition, there are two different viewpoints or two different groups. The one is the believer of the curator, the divine curator. The other is the uh, uh, believer of the uh, uh, karmic, collective karmic force of the uh, living beings, sentient beings. So this 
can be classified. One is a believer of the Creator, and the other is a non-believer of the Creator, yet these are being created by the collective karmic force of the all sentient beings. These are the two um, general viewpoints of the every religion or spiritual traditions. Then there are no believers of any religious tradition. They do not discuss this, uh, how these are coming to being, uh, what the cause of these are not much discussed. They may be understood, it is uh, all accidental. Um, <clears throat> these two different traditions, believing in curator or not believing in curator, both of them are, uh, and both of them are believe the principle of causality. No effect can come without any cause. There must be some positive, forceful cause that will only give the result. So all this uh, happenings in this universe are due to certain cause. The cause may be ultimately put to the creator or the cause may be ultimately put to the actions of the living creatures. These are two different things, but this difference is also by and large language difference. And in an ultimate reality, there's not much difference. Now coming back to the wisdom of life and nature. <clears throat> um, if someone have a wisdom about the life, it will see all the living things are equal, secret, and to be respected and not to be destroyed. If a direct perception of life someone has, that is called wisdom about life, that wisdom will no, not allow anyone to disrespect any living creature or destroy any living creature and uh, will consider the living creature is a secret one. Similarly, someone have a wisdom of the nature, they will understand the nature is the uh, ultimate source of power for all uh, universe existence. And therefore, they will not try to uh, misuse or overpower the nature they will not try to uh, make artificial substitute to the nature. What I am trying to say is that the nature has the potential, complete potential, to satisfy all living beings' real needs. And um, the living beings are user of the natural resources. So natural resources and the user of it, the living beings, has a very close relationship, cooperative each other, and the nature will uh, give all the needs to be fulfilled of the entire living creature on this earth. But in the present time, particularly for the last 250 or 300 years, among the living beings, particularly the human beings, have been uh, gone through a great change. Now the human beings are no more remain as user of the natural resources. We are become the consumer. And uh, we forgot what is our basic need, and we also go after our greed. 
the human greed has been exploited by the producers. And since entire humanity has become consumer, not user, then we misuse the natural resources, thereby the climate change, the global warming, and the um, environmental destruction, all these are just direct result of human greed. Gandhi have said very correctly that <coughs> the Mother Earth is capable of satisfying all living beings' needs, but the whole Earth cannot satisfy a single person's greed. So that is to be understand and we have lost the balance and cooperation with the nature. That is the source of all the present problems which our humanity is facing. To um, conclude it, if we have a wisdom of life and nature, then uh, there will not be a disrespect or disharmony with the living beings and with the nature. And we are able to uh, respect each other, love each other, having a compassionate mind to each other with other living beings as well as uh, with the nature, then the entire universe will be a very happy one and there will be no conflict, there is no misery. And uh, as long as we don't have that wisdom, we understand or we misunderstood the nature can be exploited or it can be overpowered, then there will be no end of any problem. Thank you for your patience hearing.